Hey, what's up guys? It's Marcus Brownlee here from MKBHD, and welcome to another high definition video tutorial. And today I'm going to be showing you how to download something. Uh, the one thing that might actually have the power to pull me away from Google that was introduced at today's uh, WWDC keynote by Apple 2010. Uh, I know this isn't the iPhone 4 or anything like that, but this is uh, the first few minutes of the Safari, pa Safari 5 page going live. I've been with Chrome for a while because of extensions, but if you look over here, you can tell this page is new just because the little new logo kind of chops off introducing Safari 5, and it still says Safari 4 at the top, and this is not really a very good looking website right now. But I'm going to try out Safari 5. I've uh, uninstalled our previous versions, so today I'm going to be showing you exactly how this works and giving you a mini review. So go ahead and hit the free download button at apple.com slash safari slash download. I'm going to download Safari 5 for XP Vista or 7 and hit the download now button. Uh, so keep in mind this is something uh, you're definitely going to want to check out a lot of the new features. Uh, one of the new features is cover flow for history and another feature is uh, reading without distractions. It'll automatically detect whether or not you're on a page with an article and if you are it'll go ahead and uh, highlight that article, remove it and let you go ahead and uh, pretty much view the fact that you're in an article by itself, hide all ads in the background just go ahead and show you what you need to see, which is just the text. So this installer.exe will finish installing. You don't have to worry about where it is as long as you can click on Safari setup.exe. I'm going to go ahead and exit out Chrome. We'll go ahead and see how I like Safari 5. Hit that run button and we'll wait for the installer to come up. So first the Windows installer is going to launch and you'll go ahead and get pretty much a standard installation screen. You're going to hit next a couple of times. You're going to hit accept a couple of times. Uh, this isn't really a very new process. I'm just showing you guys what it'll look like the first time you get it. Install a desktop shortcut? Sure, why not? And uh, I don't want Bonjour. I don't like Apple software in the first place. Uh, so hit yes if user account control does happen to prompt you for anything in Windows 7 or Windows Vista. And it'll go ahead and compute your, uh, your space requirements. Make sure you have the appropriate a video card to use CoverFlow, make sure you have the appropriate video card for uh, top sites and etc and all those other different things. So once you're finished, your status will obviously uh, finish to the very back of the status bar and we'll go ahead and open Safari for the first time when this, uh, when this installer finishes, which it looked like it should be right about now. Or maybe it'll surprise me and go through it again, yes of course. So validating install. Now, of course, if you had a previous version of Safari installed, you're going to have uh, all your bookmarks will be saved and will actually appear because the program files, when you uninstall Safari, Apple doesn't actually like to wipe your program files. Uh, so all you have to do is just, uh, well, you'll have all your bookmarks from the last version of Safari if you did use it. If you haven't ever used Safari on your computer, it'll be a fresh install and you won't have any of that. So now that the uh, Safari has been successfully installed, we'll hit finish to uh, open it up. And we actually have to restart our system for this to take effect. We'll hit yes or hit no. Uh, I guess we'll go ahead and hit yes to restart, and I'll see you in a few. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, what we've just done is a quick restart, one of those fast reboots of Windows 7. You guys know how fast that is. And what we have here on our desktop is a shortcut for Safari 5, and what we're going to do is double-click and open it for the very first time on this Windows machine, see if there's anything special. I remember in Safari 4 there was a neat little boot animation just for the first time you open Safari, which is pretty cool. Uh, we'll see if anything like that goes down for Safari 5, that would be pretty cool. Also the first boot of Safari does take a little bit longer since you're uh, obviously retrieving old program files, digging through your system to make sure you've got uh, everything Safari needs to work properly. Uh, and so here it is, it looks like it's opened in a 1280 by 720 window. And here is Safari 5. Now, I won't go very much into depth from here, but you obviously still have the Top Sites button. It kept my uh, Google.com as the home page. It looks like the Top Sites button has changed a little bit. Looks a little bit more like a Keynote. You can also search history down here in CoverFlow. I don't have much of a history yet in Safari. You can also hit the, the Edit button at the bottom left-hand corner and have a small, medium, or large bunch of thumbnails. As you can see, these are videos that I plan on doing in the near future. So anyway, that has been my overview of how to get Safari 4. Uh, I guess I'll go to Engadget.com just to see. Uh, the Safari Reader does look cool. Oh, they brought back the progress bar. That is neat. That's very cool that they brought back the progress bar. So we'll click on this enormous iPhone 4 article. 
and uh, you'll see that it does look pretty good. We're going to go ahead and check out Safari extensions. We'll check out HTML5 uh, enhancements and support. We'll check out the reader and everything like that. But either way, this has been a quick overview of Safari 4, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. So thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.